Again, God is good how often and all the time. Find someone close by and say, neighbor, God loves you and I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break. I love him too. Amen. I believe as it was already been said, it was David that one day penned the words, I was glad when they said unto me, come and let us go into the house of the Lord. Notice David didn't say everything was all right. Notice David didn't say everything was going in my favor. Notice David didn't say I had a refrigerator full of food. I had a bank account full of money. He didn't say all of that. He just said, I was glad when they said unto me, come and let us go into the house of the Lord. Why do you say that, David? Because no matter what's going on in my personal life, I recognize that when I come into the house of God, I have the opportunity to leave all that stuff on the outside. Leave all my worries on the outside. Leave all my cares on the outside. And I come on the inside to worship and to praise God's holy and his divine name. I hope y'all didn't come to look at me this morning. I hope that you did not come to look at nobody else. I hope you did not come to spectate. But I hope that you came to participate. What am I going to participate in? If the Lord been good to you, you ought to say amen. If the Lord woke you up this morning, you ought to tell God thank you. If the Lord has brought you through something, you ought to let God know how much you appreciate him. It's time out for us coming into the house of God, acting like we waiting on the mortician to roll the casket up in here, acting like we at a funeral, like we got something to be sad about. If God woke you up this morning, you got a reason to rejoice. If you got a reasonable portion of health and strength, you got a reason to rejoice. If at this time you ain't went cuckoo for cocoa puff, you got a reason to rejoice and be glad on this morning. Because God has been good. God has not just been good, but he has been better than good. Who wouldn't serve a God like him? Who wouldn't serve a God like him? And it does my heart good to look out this morning. This is, about, from, from my memory, this is the biggest crowd that we have had um, since we have come back in the building. I just want to say that it's so good to see everyone that has come out this morning. And as always, it's good to have those that have tuned in via live stream to watch us virtual this morning. Just want to let you know that you are welcome here and you are part of the services that are going on on this morning. And we are always ask if you would invite somebody to church. Go ahead and share. Start a watch party here at this moment. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord on this morning? That was a third of y'all. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? All right. All right. I believe you came to the right place. Let's go to the gospel of John. The gospel of John and we're going to be in chapter 20 and we're going to begin at verse number 19, conclude at verse number 23. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. That was a Sunday school teacher that was teaching a lesson on honesty to her Sunday school kids. And she asked the kids, she said, children, do you know where kids go that don't put their money in the collection plate? And a little boy in the back of the room smiled and lifted his hand. She said, Johnny, do you know the answer? He said, yes, ma'am, the movies. I need the oh, I need the every hour. I need the oh, bless me now, my. Savior, I come to Thee, and we need Thee, oh, we need Oh. 
disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them peace be unto you and when he had said so said he showed unto them his hands and his side then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord then said Jesus to them again peace be unto you as my father has sent me even so I send you and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. Look at somebody and say, Hey, you. you. Don't skip church. They didn't hear you. Look at the other one and say, Hey, you. Don't skip church. There's a whole lot that you miss when you don't come to church. No matter what someone tries to say or no matter how someone tries to relate to you what happened, no matter how much they try to explain what happened, if you are not there, it loses something in translation. They can never repeat to you what you miss and you'll never be able to grasp it because that moment will never come around again. There are some particular things at church that you have to be there in order for you to be able to understand. You have to see it. You have to be in it. You have to be involved. You have to be active and in the movement or you're going to miss it. There are so many reasons and excuses that people use not to come to church. They're mad with the preacher. I hope you're not mad at but They're mad at the deacon. I hope you're not mad at them. They're upset about some decision that has been made on the church. Or they just plain and simple don't like people. Or they just don't like the location. It's just simple that people who don't come to church don't come because they don't want to come to church. People come up with all kinds of excuses and reasons why they don't show up to church. And for those, uh, they have all kinds of reasons. I just want to let you know, if you want to find an excuse and if you want to find a reason, the devil is going to make sure that you find any and every reason and excuse that you can find to justify your not being present in the assembly of the saints. But my brother and my sister, none of us have an excuse that is good enough as to why we don't come to church. We as Christians are never intentionally miss church because there are some things that happen at church that when you're not there, that they can never be duplicated. Walk with me around the text. Jesus has just been risen from the dead. Crucifixion has taken place on Calvary's mountain. He shed blood for the sins of the whole world and he died just as he said that he would. And then he said, if you destroy the temple in three days, I'll raise it up again. And here it is, the third day, and Thomas's name, whose name is Didymus, a twin, one of the disciples, all of the other disciples are in a room with the door shut, but Thomas is not there. Thomas is absent from the assembly. Thomas is nowhere to be found on this Sunday because of maybe he's been discouraged or maybe he's been disappointed or maybe he's been downcast because his expectations have not yet been met. He thought really and truly that Jesus was Messiah, but the last time he heard from him, he had been crucified on a Roman cross. He died, but Thomas does not believe that Jesus is really risen. Jesus is alive. Jesus is out of the grave. Jesus is walking around in the flesh. And one of his own disciples didn't even come to church. They're in a room with the door shut. Watch this. The Bible says Jesus shows up. 
Now here's the first thing you miss when you miss church. You miss the presence of the Lord. Because nothing can keep him out. I don't think I got that over to you. That they are in a room with the door shut and locked. Because they are in fear of their lives. Because if they crucify Jesus, they know they're coming for them next. But Jesus does not have a key. He don't have access to a window. Jesus just doesn't walk through the door, but he just shows up. Thank God that when we come to church, we encounter the presence of the Lord. Don't matter that the that somebody is not that Jesus is here. And it does not matter if, if whatever's going on in my personal life, as long as I can get to Jesus. The woman said, I know I've squandered all my living. I went around for 12 years. But if I can just get to Jesus, I don't care what kind of issue you got this morning. I don't care what kind of cash you got going on in your personal life. If you can just get to Jesus, everything will be made better. Jesus is here. Jesus is present. He is in the assembly. I mean, it's his house. It's his day. And when he shows up, his presence makes the difference between the church and the crowd. His presence is, is the difference between a church and a social club. I don't, I don't want to go to church if the Lord is not present. Because his presence is is what makes the difference. He does not stop with the doors being locked. And listen, even if you lock your mind, even if you lock your heart, if he wants to get in, he knows exactly how to get in. He knows how to send enough trouble to make your heart open and say, Lord, I need your help right about now. And I just got one witness this morning. He knows how to break down the barriers. He knows how to get to you. Losing your job will let Jesus in. Losing your house will let Jesus in. Being broke down, busted, and disgusted will let Jesus in. And let me say for those that come to church and never open your mouth and worship God and give God a praise. He knows how to walk through your situation and apply enough pressure in order to get you to praise his name because enough tears will make you say hallelujah. Enough pain will make you call on the Lord. Being broke long enough will make you want to give God a praise. Now, not only do you miss his presence, but you miss his power. In verse number 19, it says, the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, the doors are shut where the disciples were, and Jesus stood in the midst of them. No power on earth can keep him down. They crucified him on a cross, but he got up from the dead because he got power. I need somebody to help me this morning. Donald Trump might have an office, but he ain't got no real power. The governor of Florida might have a position, but he ain't got no real power. The Jesus has not some power, but he got all power, all authority. And listen, when you recognize who he is, his presence and his power will change the way that you worship. It changes how you give God praise. And it reorders your priorities when you know that whatever you need, my God got power. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, it won't be perhaps until you can't do nothing for yourself that you will realize that if the Lord don't help you, you won't be able to make it. Some of the most spiritual moments of your life won't even be at church. Some of you have been sick unto death, but you prayed to God and the Lord turned your situation around. And we realize now that not just some things are possible through God, but all things are possible through God that gives us the strength. When you miss church, you miss his presence. When you miss church, you miss his power, but thirdly, you miss his peace. Is right there in verse number 19. He came in the room without opening the door. That's his presence. He stood in the midst of them after being crucified. That speaks to his power. And the first thing he said to them, peace be unto you. You 
know when you miss worship, somebody ought to help me this morning, the, the very, the very peace you are trying to get a hold of, God put it in the heart of the preacher and you missed the message because you were mad with somebody. Wanted to be at home or wanted to be where you are, that's not in the presence or in the power of God and you miss godly peace. Listen, brothers and sisters, when my soul is weary, I need peace. When I can't sleep at night, I need peace that surpasses all understanding. I need a peace that when I show up on my job, they want to know why I'm smiling, even though I got fired. Because I realized that the same God that gave me this one, he already got something else waiting on me. Your friends don't know. What you still talking to them bad as they've been to you. Folk want to know, as, as bad as I've treated you, how can you still smile in my face? As much as you know as I done talked about you, how can you street still treat me as you treat me? Because I recognize, just like Jesus told them, they know not what they do. The Bible said it is better to have a millstone hung around your neck, cast out into the middle of the sea, better than a mystery, what a God, little one. So when folks talk about you, don't worry about it. When folks speak in all kind of matter against you, don't worry about it. God will take care of them. So he says, this joy, this joy, this peace that he's offering is not like joy and peace that the world gives. Because you realize that anything that the world gives, the world is also able to take it away. But can I, re and I recognize, I recognize something. I realize, can't nobody take your joy. You got to give it up. Can't nobody take your peace. You got to give it up. I don't know about y'all, but God has been so good to me. God has brought me to a place in my life where I had to let the devil know you're not taking my joy. You're not taking my peace. You're not taking my happiness. You're not taking anything that I got because you didn't give it to me and you can't take it away. So let me tell you, so let me tell you, you might have all the things in the world, but if you ain't got God, Without God, you might have all the money in the world. Money will buy you food, but not an appetite. Money will buy you medicine, but it won't buy you good health. Money will buy you a house, but money will never make it a home. Without God, money will buy you a wedding, but you'll never have a real marriage because God has got to put his peace into your situation to make whatever you put your hands on make sense to you. So, you ever wonder why some people ride in a hoopty and they just as happy as they can be? Because their sense of somebodyness doesn't come from your opinion of the car. Some folk are happy riding on the bus or just sitting down in their house in an apartment and they're satisfied because who they are is not wrapped up in the things that they have. Here's what I want you to do. Now, now I know you're living good. You may be balling, shot calling. You maybe got it going on. You got a little something in your life, but you got to have faith that truly trusts God. Don't worry about how your bills going to get paid. Don't worry about who's on your side. Don't worry about who's lying on you. If God be for you, he's more than the whole world against you. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Good God on my, he's a wonderful savior. So you miss his presence. You miss his power. You miss his peace. But in verse number 20, you miss his praises. You miss his praises. It's right there. This is enough to praise God for the rest of your days right here. The Bible says, and when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Here it is. It says, then were the disciples glad. Then. Then, after they knew it was really Jesus, then were the disciples glad. You can't praise God unless you're glad. 
a, 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 a glad heart makes the soul prosper, makes you smile, makes you just feel better because some, something is glad. I know I may be in the middle of a trial, but I'm still glad that God is keeping me. I know that I may be in the middle of a test, but I'm glad that God has not allowed it to take me over. I can still be glad. Maybe you're not glad you're a Christian because you want to please everybody. Or you want to make everybody like you. Or you want to make sure you shake hands with the right people and network with the right group of people because you're trying to get the hookup. You, you, want, you want to go up and, and you're trying to make sure that everybody that's supposed to like you likes you. But if God is on your side, you don't need no hookup. He is the hookup. If God is on your side, you need not worry about no network. God will give you your own network. God will provide you with all of those things that you stand in need of. Because when the praises go up, blessings surely come down. And when you really want something from God, you got to praise him like you already got it. I said, when you really want something from God, you got to praise God. I learned something that when you're standing in the hallway of life, everybody else doors get open. Everybody else can that you got to learn how to praise God until he opens a door for you. Lord, it may not be happening today, but I still praise you. Might not be happening tomorrow, but I still pray. Until it comes, I'm going to praise him. Listen, listen. I don't need a song leader to get me excited. I wish I had one witness. I don't need a preacher to tell me I don't offer God a pray. I don't need anybody to try to tamper with my pray. I don't need nobody to choreograph me on how to give God a worship. Just when I start thinking about the many blessings that God has given me, it's enough for me to give him glory. Just thinking about, I don't understand how folk who come to church and go to sleep. You could have stayed at the house. I, 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 mean, I mean, be as comfortable as they want to be in that pew. If your medicine makes you sleepy, take it off the church. But on Sunday morning, if the Lord wakes me up, I intend to give God not half a praise. I intend to give God my best praise. Tell somebody you ought to give God your best praise. When I go home sometimes, when I go home sometimes on Sunday evening, the Lord knows I'd be so tired. Not just from preaching, but to lifting my voice aloud and giving God praise. I tell you, you ought to feel like you've been to the gym when you leave the house of God. You ought to feel like you're the shack. You ought to feel like you had your whole workout session when you leave the house of God because you gave God everything you had. Lifting your voice and giving God praise. Now, for some people, alcohol gets them high. For some people, dope mellows them out. For some people, drugs and all kinds of mood-altering substances get them excited. But all I need is just hear the name of Jesus. All I need is to just think about the goodness of God and what he has done and just see how God has kept me. That's enough for me right there. And I don't know about y'all, but anybody like me, you can't wait until Sunday to start praising God. Sometimes you find yourself driving down the road. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Sometimes you be in your own job, in your cubicle. You don't want nobody here. Oh, Lord, I thank you for this day. Wherever you are, you realize you're in the store. And man, that was a time I ain't had a penny to rub together. But God has blessed me where I can go in here. I ain't got to get great value. I can get the name brand stuff. God. has been good to me. And I know it's two or three people in here that realize where you were when you met God and you look at your life right now and you got to say, man, when nobody but Jesus, when nobody but the Lord that brought me through. So I gotta ask you, I gotta ask you, where would you be this morning had it not been for the Lord on your side? The enemies would have killed you a long time ago. They would have took you out a long time ago. Worry and stress would have took you out a long time ago. But thank God that God was on your side. 
And every time you were about to give up, God said, hold on. I know your friends put a period right here. Let me put a comma. Because this is not the end of your story. Tell somebody your condition is not your conclusion. They were glad. They were glad. And I need somebody here this morning that's glad. Who's glad to be in the service just one more time. I don't, I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But I'm just glad to be in the service of the Lord. Just one more time. Hell in my house. Hell in my family. But I'm glad. I'm glad. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to fight it. I don't know if I'm going to win. But I'm glad. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Just one more time. He didn't have to wake me up this morning. But I'm sure not glad that he did. Didn't have to start me on my way. But I'm sure not glad that he did. Ain't nobody had to dress you up this morning. Ain't nobody had to feed you this morning. Ain't nobody had to wipe your backside this morning. You did it for yourself. That's why I was glad when they said unto me, come and let us go into the house of the Lord. When you miss church, you miss his presence. You miss his power. You miss his peace. You miss his praises. And then in verse number 21, come on. you miss his promotions. Come on. Somebody say, God, God. Level, me up. level me up. He, you miss, you miss, you miss his promotions. It's, it's right there. Then Jesus said to them again, peace be unto you. Watch this, watch this. As my father has sent me, even so I send you. Jesus says, what I am in the world, that's what I want you to be. That's, that's what I want you to be. But you can't be that if you miss his presence. You can't be that if you miss his power. You can't be that if you miss his peace. You can't be that if you can't praise him. He can't send you if you won't open your mouth. Some people will never get it. Because the world has taught you, keep you cool. The world has taught you how to be disinterested in worship. The world has taught you to chill and relax in the presence of God. As if you're doing God a favor by showing up in here on Sunday morning. You're not doing God no favor by showing up on Sunday morning. Because like in the Bible, if you don't want to praise him, God will find two or three rocks somewhere. that got enough sense in their mind to give God a praise. I don't know about y'all. I don't need no rocks crying out for me. I can cry out for myself. What the Lord has, what the Lord has done. He said, even send I you. Just like the Father sent me, Jesus said, I'm giving you the same commission. Go be me. That's what he said. Go be me. Jesus literally says, go in the world and be me. Be me at the school. Be me on your job. Be me in your neighborhood. Be me in your family. But you got to get my presence. You got to have my power. You got to have my peace and my praise right. Or you'll never get a promotion. And one of the most dangerous problems in the church today is people who want to promote themselves. People people who want to promote people who want to promote themselves and God doesn't have his hand on them let me tell you you can tell when God's hand is somebody on somebody when God's hand ain't on I say you can tell when God's hand is on somebody and when God's hand is not on somebody they always tell you what they have and what they know and I'm Dr. this and I'm Dr. that if you all of that I know it before I met you but if you got to promote yourself It may mean that you ain't really all that. I ain't saying because 
cream rises to the top, amen, somebody. And when you get the attitude that why they doing that, I could be doing that, that's the reason you're not doing it. Because you're a self-promoter. And if you exalt yourself, God knows how to bring you back down. But if you stay down on your knees, God knows how to exalt you. Now, if you stay on your knees, you may fall, you may sin, you may mess up. But if you stay on your knees, you ain't got far to drop to get down to God to talk to. If you way up there and you fall, you break your neck, break your back. But if you're down on your knees, it's easier for you to come back to a position of prayer. The last thing, and I'm going to leave you alone. Now, if you miss church, you miss his presence, you miss his power, you miss his peace, you miss his praises, you miss his promotion, and then lastly, you miss his provisions. Verse 22 and verse number 23, and when he said it, I like this word where it says he breathed on God breathed on me. Somebody say, Lord breathe on me. Somebody say, Lord, breathe on my money. Breathe on my family. Breathe on my sisters. Breathe on my brother. Lord, breathe on me. Lord, breathe on my health. Breathe on my situation. Breathe on my mind. Lord, I need you to breathe on me. The Bible says that when he breathed on them, they received the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost, let me tell you, don't come to make you speak in tongues. Come on, E-K-O-C, coke spelled backwards. It ain't gonna come. It don't come. It don't come to make you speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost hasn't come to make you roll on the floor. It hasn't come to make you, uh, it's come to make you live the life that you pray about. It's come to keep you grounded. It's come to keep you settled. Somebody said, thank God. For the Holy Ghost. It comes to make you live the life that you sing about. So that's why every one of us in here today ought to ask God, breathe on me. I'm not always right, so I need you to breathe on me. I, I messed up. That's why I need you to breathe. I know I shouldn't have said it. That's why I need you to I could have handled the situation better. Lord, that's why I need you to breathe. I need, I need you to breathe on me. Lord, my children driving me crazy. Lord, I need you to whoo, breathe, breathe on me. And somebody can't help but testify. Somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed for me. That's why you are where you are right now because somebody that you didn't even know was on their knees praying for you, asking God to help you, asking God not to condemn you where they were, but God just give them a little more time. You know why you didn't go to jail? Somebody was praying for you. Somebody was praying for you, asking the Lord to breathe on you. You want to know why you're not in the graveyard somewhere? Because your mama and your grandmama and them, they stay down on bending knee praying for you. You remember, I know, I love it. My, my great grandmama, she's 90 years old. And when I love to watch her pray. Whenever she prays, she'll get down and she'll pray. She said, Lord, here I am, knee bent and body bowed. My face bowed before thy mother's dust and my head lifted before the throne of grace. Thank you that when I laid down last night, that my bed that I laid down on wasn't my cooling board. And thank God that the sheets that I laid down on, they weren't my winding sheet. Lord, I just want to thank you for one more day. I love it. I love it. You got to know how to have conversation with him. Is there anybody here? They want God to breathe on you. If you want your kids to act right, ask God to breathe on them. 
If you want your marriage to come back together, come ask God to breathe on your marriage. If you want your job to go well, ask God to breathe on your job. Is there anybody here I want to know that really love Jesus? I, 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 mean, I, I, mean, I mean, you ain't faking it, you ain't phony, by no stretch of the imagination. Anybody in here that truly love the Lord? I mean, you want God to make a way for you. I got to ask you a question. Won't he pick you up? Won't he turn you around? Won't he place your feet on solid ground? And when he breathed on them, they received the Holy Ghost. And then he said, whatever sins you get rid of on earth, I get rid of them in heaven. And then he said, whether you retain on earth, I retain in heaven. In other words, whoever messing with you on earth, I take care of them in heaven. Whoever you forgive on earth, I forgive them in heaven. Because when he breathes on you, your life will be in a whole new place. And folk can't understand why you so settled. Why you so balanced. Why it seems like you got everything together. And why your life matters so much. Because God has breathed on you. God has breathed on you. He's breathed on you. This is why it is important that you come to church. Because if you miss it, you cannot be all of who you need to be for God. You miss his peace. And I know two or three of y'all in here really need some peace this morning. You stressed out. If I had a magnifying glass and it could look in your mind, I would wonder how you ain't in a straight jacket somewhere sitting between four padded walls going cuckoo for Cocoa Puff, not knowing your name, not knowing you're going to from your coming from. Somebody can say, Lord, I've been through some situation. I've been through some circumstances that pulled me through there, that took me through the ringer, but I'm glad that I had a God that was on my side. I'm glad that I had somebody in the midnight hour when I was worried, when I was crying. He was the one that dried the very tear from my eye. I got somebody with me. I got somebody with me. I got somebody with me. And the reason why I'm so adamant about coming to church is because I already know Monday through Saturday, Satan is on his job. I know Sunday, Satan is on his job. Because there are folk that when I'm praising them, they're looking at me crazy. There are folk that when I want to open up my mouth and give God glory, they're looking at me crazy. What you doing all that for? It don't take all of that. You ought to chill out somewhere. But let me tell you, if God ain't doing that for you, you can sit down like a knot on the law, like you ain't got good sin, like you ain't got sense to praise him. But if it done anything for you, you can't help but to give him glory. You can't help but to tell him thank you. When he's done something in your life, when he's done something in your life and you don't need nobody you, you ought not need nobody to ask you has the Lord done anything for you your life, your life in and of itself is a testimony that if God can do something with somebody like me imagine what he can do in your life remember where the Lord found you remember remember where the Lord found you where he came to to pick you up where he came, you was out there, you, was, you were good while in the hall pen. You were good, you were good. You, you, ain't, you ain't seen no need to get out of your situation, to get out of it. You say, man, I'm gonna just sit here. I'm like, I'm just, you ever, and you ever notice how and you, can, you can wash a hog, and the minute you put it back in the pen, it get right back in the mud, start, start, start rolling back around. Because some of us are so consumed with our sin, we are so consumed with our lust and with our desires that we just can't stay away from. And this hour and a half, two hours on Sunday morning, in and of itself, is too much for us to give up. That's why as soon as we get out of here, we got to go grab a bottle. That's why as soon as we get out of here, we got to go grab us a dub or an eight ball or something. We got we to we get it right. We got to get it right. That's why when we leave here, we got to have something. And why do I need that something? To escape my reality. I don't like who I am. I don't like what's going on in my life. So therefore any way I can get out of it. I'm going to get out of it. But the dangerous thing about that. Is what it took to get out of it the first time. It's going to take a little bit more to get out of it the next time. 
and, and, and before you know it, the weed don't do you no good no more. Now you to move the pills. And, and before you know it, the pills ain't doing that for you. Now you to move to the rock. And now you to move to the rock. Now you got to find something else to give you that same experience that you had. But I tell y'all, I get so high of Jesus, I don't need nothing else. Let, let, me, let me tell you, this experience that I have on Sunday morning is enough to carry me. I realize, I realize that I'm fighting on every side. I, I, I realize, you know what? I'm, I'm not just fighting spiritual wickedness that's set up in high places. I'm fighting the police officers. He pulled me over. I'm, 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 fighting all, I'm fighting all kind of stuff because I just don't know how things are going to turn out. Amen. We're fighting every day of our life. We're fighting. And, and, and can I tell you, can I tell you something we already know? Most of y'all fighting battles in your mind. Come on. And you'll say, preacher, it's not what you can see that really got me where I am. It's what you can't see. It's, it's, it's what you can't see. It's, 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 what, it's what I'm dealing with in my, in my heart, in my mind. That got me where I am. That got me doing the things that I'm doing. But can I tell you something? You sang it. Why not do it? Take your burdens to the Lord. And leave them there. You've been dealing with it all this time. Realize you can't do nothing about it. What you still trying to struggle with it for? Give it to the Lord. And leave it there. You recognize by now you couldn't make it no better. All you do is make it worse. Why not play with it? Give it to the Lord. And let him take care of it. But when you don't come to church, you don't know how to handle the situations of life. When, when, when you miss the assembly, you, you, don't, you don't know how to fight these battles. You don't, you don't know how to get over these hills because you're not equipped to handle them. So I want to encourage us. I know, I know we're living in difficult times. I know that. I know that. But the same energy that we put into doing stuff in our personal lives, you ought to put that same energy into the house of God. You don't let your house go lacking. You don't let your family go lacking. Therefore, you ought not let the house of God go lacking. If, there, if there's anything going on in any type of club or anything that you are involved in, you're going to be there masked up, gloved up, whatever you're going to do. You ought to do the same thing when it comes to the house of God. I don't, we we, <laughs> we got to put first things first. You got to put first things first. And I want to let us know, the reason why a lot of things don't go right in your life, God ain't first. Why stuff always falling through, God ain't first. And when you don't have God at the top, when God is not first, you will never be successful. You will never be able to make it up when God is not first in your life. But when you seek first his kingdom and do his righteousness, do his will, God will take care of you. God will take care of you and he will provide. You'll be like David. I ain't never seen. Never. never. That's a pretty strong word. Never means notwithstanding. There's absolutely no evidence of the contrary. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken. No, see, begging for bread. I said the other week, when a bird ever came and knocked on your door and asked you where the worms was at? When? When, when a lily ever uprooted itself and came knocking on your door and said, hey amen, where my substance is coming from? If God cares for the lilies of the field yes, and for the fowl of the air, yes, how much more does he care about you? He cares. He cares a whole lot about you. He cares about what you're going through. Amen. He cares about your sister. Can I tell y'all, COVID-19 wasn't the first problem you ever had. No. Some people in here have been dealing with issues for years. So some some of us dealing with some stuff for a long time. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Get that stuff over to God. Give, give those worries, give those cares, give those trials over to God and allow him to take care of it. Don't look back. Don't worry about the Egyptians that are chasing you today. For the Egyptians that you see today, you will see them again no more forever. Don't look back. You left it behind. What I told you last week, run! Don't look back. Leave it behind. Because God has something greater in store for us. How many of y'all believe that? God, God has something great in store for me. 
How many of y'all really believe that the half has not been told in your life? How many, how many of y'all really believe that God can cause your latter days to be greater than your former days? He will allow that to happen. But you got to be here. You got to be here. How am I going to expect to pass the exam unless I'm present in class? to get the information that I need for the exam. It's not going to happen. I, I, let, let me tell you, let me, sister, I, sister, um, sister Project, I don't care how smart that student is. I don't care how much they excel in whatever subject. Unless they come in your class, listen to what it is that is coming out of your mouth. They are not going to be able to get the information that they need to pass it. You got to come here. Because Satan ain't taking no breaks. He, he, he's, not, he's not taking a COVID sabbatical. So since he ain't taking now, you ought not take one. We need to strengthen ourselves through his word. And we do that by coming together and worshiping him. Even in our singing, with our singing, the Bible said, sing it, through our singing, we admonish one another through the singing of psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. What do you mean, preacher? You don't know what your real neighbor got going on. But just hearing the songs and the praises going up, you don't know what it's doing for their spirit. You, you don't know what it's You don't know. They were just about ready to drive off a cliff. You just don't know what they were dealing with. But because they were able to come into the presence of God. If I could but touch the hem of his glove. I ain't got to touch his hand. If I could but touch something that's on him, connected to him, I knew I'd be made whole. Some of us need to be made whole this morning. Yes, You're in the right place to be made whole. The doctor will see you now. Yes, <laughs> the doctor. The do I, I know you've been sitting in the waiting room. You're tired. I know. I, I know you've been sitting there. I know. I know you're about tired. I know you're tired of everybody else getting called back. I know you're tired of everybody else been seen. But the doctor will see you now. Amen. And he's ready to take care of your situation. My brother, my sister, my friend, beloved, God is so good. And he's so good that he decided to bless you with another chance. He decided to bless you with another opportunity to get it right. You know, it's not by accident that you are here this morning. God in heaven divinely orchestrated it for you to be here on this morning. And I do believe that he's saying to somebody here today the same thing that he said all throughout scripture, and that is, come to me. All mm -hmm. oh, you that are weary and heavy laden. And he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly in spirit, and you shall find rest for your soul. Somebody, somebody here, somebody here this morning, you don't even know the Lord in the pardon of your sin. He's saying unto you, repent and be baptized. Become a part of my body. Become a member of my church. Live faithful unto death. And I'll give you a crown of life that will never fade away. For somebody that life is just taking you down through there. He's giving you an opportunity to say, hey, I need prayer. I'm I, need, I need the prayers of the righteous because I don't know how I'm going to make it through my tomorrow. But prayer will fix it for you. Prayer will make it better for you. Prayer always makes the situation. So my brother, my sister, my friend, if you're here today and, and you don't even know God in the pardon of your sins, can I tell you, as he told the prophet Jeremiah, he said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Yes, sir. And I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the next. Meaning before your mama ever met your daddy, I had a plan. Yes, before you ever said goo goo gaga, I had a plan for your life. But, but before you even knew anything about anything, I had a plan yes, for your yes, life. God instituted a plan for all of mankind because you remember God had created all these things in the beginning. God called everything. You notice he always said, let there be, let there be. But when it came time for him to make man, that's the only time that he ever got his hands dirty. That's, that's, the, only, that's the only time that you ever see God putting his hands on something. And form and some said they deformed man from the dust of the earth. Then when it came time for him to make woman, he touched the man, took a rib out of his side and created woman. And everything that he said, the Bible said everything that he made was good. Somewhere down along the line, some things got happened and the Bible 
said that it grieved him that he had ever made man. Since that time, man has been on the downward fall. Sin has been overtaking us for centuries down through the generations. God knew, God saw that we needed a way back to righteousness. God saw, God knew that we were standing in the need of salvation. So he sent us the best that heaven had to offer. He sent us Jesus. Jesus came and was born among us. The Bible says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The Word became flesh, came down and dwelt among us, and we beheld him as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's why before Jesus came on the scene, couldn't nobody preach because the Word had not yet arrived. But the Word has been here since the beginning of, since the beginning of time. And, and, and he knew, he knew that we were going to need a way back. So he came. So he came. He came. He came. And not only did he come, but he died. Everybody dies, but not everybody gets back up. That, that's the difference between my God and Buddha. That's, 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 that's the difference between my God and Muhammad. That, that, that's the difference between my God and, and, and Zeus and, and all these other people. Because all of those other people... You can go right now to where they're buried at, the shrines and things that are made up to their tomb. But the tomb my Jesus was in, you know, a few months ago, I was blessed to go and see that very place. And can I tell you something, Denson? It was empty. It wasn't nobody in there. It was, it was empty. The one that was there. You remember that Sunday morning when Mary early... Oh, and, and still, you know, the sisters are still the one that rise up early. You'll catch that on the way home. But um, early, that Sunday morning, they were going to anoint his body with burial spices. And they told him, say, hey, he ain't here. He gone. The, the, the same, the, the one you're looking for. But he told us, I want you to go back and tell him, man, he ain't here. He ain't here. He, and Jesus, Jesus. He came and he fulfilled the mission for which he came. And that was to save lost men. Yeah. That is why he came. To seek and to save those that were lost. Jesus came and he gave his life. You remember when he stood before Pilate and Pilate said, Don't you know that I have the power to take your life? Jesus looked at Pilate and said, The only power you got? <laughs> Is what my father gives you. Come on, you ain't got no power. He said, no man takes my life. I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I got the power to pick it back up again. So didn't nobody kill Jesus? Didn't nobody take his life? He offered it up. He gave it up. He gave himself. And you know, even he had a struggle within himself. And it helps us to see that Jesus was not just 100% God, but he was 100% man at the same time. Because Jesus, I believe he got to thinking about that thing in the garden. He's like, hold on here. Hold, hold on. <laughs> hold on just a second. <laughs> now, as tight as me and you is, you know, I, I came here for you. You sent me down here. Is there another way? What else can we do? I mean, I mean, Judas already, you see, can you use you? He's already lied on me, kill him in my place. I mean, what? Not my will, but let your will be done. Somebody say, Lord, in my life, not your will, not my will, but your will be done. And saying that right there simply means, Lord, even if I don't like it, let your will be done. Even if I don't understand it, let your will be done. Even if it hurts, Lord, let your will, let your will be done. Because I know if it is your will, it's always going to work out for my good and for your glory. I know. I know it's going to work out. I know it's going to work out. So Jesus has come. He shed his blood. He purchased the church with his own shed blood. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter number two, on that day, we know Peter preached the first gospel sermon on that day when they heard those things that Peter said. He said, said, they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And he said unto them, repent and be baptized, not some of you, but every one of you, 
in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Ain't no man, ain't no woman that can tell you whether or not you welcome into the body of Christ. You don't fit into the body of Christ. Man has nothing to do with God except in you. God he is the one that does the adding. And when God puts you in, can't nobody take you out. So he has come. He has come to give us a way back. Don't let that opportunity pass you by. My friend, if you need to know the Lord today, if you need to come into a saving relationship with him today, hear his word. Hear, hear it. Hear, hear his word. Hear the gospel. What is the gospel? That he lived, that he died, and on the third day he rose again with all power in his hand. You've heard and you believed it. Now if you believe it, repent of your sins. Confess Christ as your Savior. Be buried with him in baptism. Have your sins washed away, done away with. Never to come up before you. This life, not the life that is to come. And the Lord himself will add you to his body. If you're here today and you're already a Christian, but you say, hey preacher, I'm dealing with life. I just need somebody to pray for me. That's all of us this morning. So if you're here today and you're standing in need of prayer, come and let us pray for you this morning. If you're here today and you're subject to the invitation, I beg and I plead, don't put off today for what you plan on doing the next time. Take this opportunity now and come to Jesus as together we stand and sing the song of invitation.